Okay, this tutorial is going to be all about Safari. So, Safari on the iPad is basically Internet Explorer or the web browsing program. Um, there's a couple of things that you really should know about Safari and the way that it operates and functions. And generally, um, most people will have it down on what we call the dock down here. Um, and like I do, it's one of the things that um, I use all the time for internet browsing. So, generally all you need to do is double tap, um, tap once on it and it brings up this interface that you see. So, I'm going to take you through um, a couple of these options and what it means and how you actually navigate through it. Then I'm going to show you something that you really must need to know if you're a mum or a dad um, about Safari and about, well, any web browser at the moment because its function has changed significantly. So starting from the left-hand side over here, um, of course, these are your forwards and backs. Um, same as like any web browser. If I had got a web page and been going through a few different things, I would have them as available. The next one over here is my bookmarks. So bookmarks relate to... Um, items that I've set that I'll need to have a look at um, later on. So I have a lot of untitled folders in here. If I have a look here, I can go to my history and it'll show me what are my different, um, what I searched on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this will fill up. Now, one of the things that students generally do is they clear their history. Um, and while we encourage them not to clear their history because it only leads to suspicion, um, there's no way of sort of preventing access to them doing that, um, apart from to have, again, good conversations with your son or daughter. So if I just tap clear history and go like that, it'll declare my history out. And there's not a lot I can do about it. I can't back, go back and retrieve it as a teacher. It's one of those things. On the right-hand side, you've also got um, down the bottom here this reading list. So these are your options. So reading lists are things that you might want to read later. And a reading list can be set, okay, as something that can be accessed offline as well so that you don't have an internet connection so it'll take a, it take a sort of snapshot of that page so you can see some of the ones that I've sort of set up um, as things that I wanted to go back and look at later on and I can add other things to my reading list but that's the same as on um, the Safari on a computer as well the next one up the top here is called iCloud tabs and these are things that are set up from my if I make a bookmark on my laptop and it's syncing all my bookmarks up to the iCloud these are the ones that I set up on my um, uh, iCloud account that I can access on my um, document. So it really does depend. Also, I, I need you to know this, that when I access Safari on my computer, the three tabs that I have open currently on my computer, these are the three that I've got open at the moment that I can then go to on my iPad. So it's sort of mirroring what's on my um, computer to what's on my iPad. So if I had open um, a really cool reading page and I had to go out on my computer, I could just go to this iCloud tab and it would show me that same page so I didn't have to remember what it was. Um, but it's a really cool feature of sort of instantly syncing so you don't have to forget. The next one is going to be this, in, um, this backwards arrow here. And this always means to send to or to create or something like that. Um, so in other words, from this page, I can mail the page out. I can send it as a message to somebody. I can tweet it. I can post it to Facebook. The one that normally happens most of the time um, is you know, add to home screen. So this will create a tile. So say if I wanted this page to be a tile, um, and what I mean by tile is a little icon. If I go tap and add to home screen, and I just call it go or something like that, and go add, it'll plop it down the bottom here as an actual app. So every time I push that button to go to that, it will automatically go back to that page. So if you've got a really cool motoring website that doesn't have an app, but you go there all the time, um, you can create it as a, as a um, tile on your home page, um, on your home screens, and go for it. Printing is pretty simple. You need an air printer, of course, for that. Copying is something you can do with that web page or that URL and send it in another format. Um, add as a bookmark, pretty safe, and add as a reading list, which we talked about before. Um, the interface takes sort of shape by, you know, you've got more tabs at the top here by pushing tab, and I can go and search, um, all this other stuff, and I can add as many of them as I want. Um, it wouldn't make any difference. The one thing that I'm going to point out, and this is probably the most important thing, is private browsing. So private browsing is the ability to turn off the um, Safari's ability to keep a track record of where your son or daughter is um, and where they've been on the internet um, and what they've been sort of doing. It sort of bypasses the history so option altogether. But to do that, the setting has to be set within um, the settings function. When we scroll down and we see Safari, so Safari, of course, is going to, for me, going to use Google as my automatic search. Um, it's going to then have a look at this private browsing here. So if I turn that on, it goes, would you like to um, close your t existing tabs before turning on private browsing? So it's going to basically set 
the computer or the iPad's ability to not follow a paper trail of where your son or daughter or you have been. It won't record any information about the website, so it won't record anything at all from that web browsing. So this is the same on a computer. So if you got, you know, don't clear your history, what I could actually do if I was a student or a, um, that or somebody who was trying to get around these mum and dads, I would then go and create a history or web trail and then turn on my private browsing so you could see that that was the case. Um, it's one of those things that um, children are doing a lot of today, which is turning on their private browsing. It can be done on any sort of web browser on a computer as well, but this is where it's set from. So now when I go back to my Safari, you'll notice that this top bar is actually a really dark gray, meaning that when I search now, it won't have a history. So in other words, if I keep going on here, it'll it'll bring it up, but it certainly won't give me a history in the tab that I've been to Google on this day. Um, it's one of those things to remember. Uh, most schools have the ability to um, track browsing. Any well, all schools have the ability to track browsing in the server room itself for the individual student, um, but on the device itself, you'll get nothing under the history of where we've been today. Private browsing. Make sure you have conversations. Make sure you're aware that it's grey um, and it changes depending on the colour. And if you're an informed person, then you will know that that's what's going on.